And now, the remainder of To Carve the King. Okay, so uh, this is going to be the teeth carving of this fellow here. You can see I'm already starting. And then um, I'm going to go into a few other methods, and uh, we're just going to talk about teeth in general. Um, so you usually use a method of just a stab cut, which you see me doing right there. And um, a lot of times in a lot of woods, at the size specifically, um, that's enough right there. And I'll show you that later. Now, it didn't work on this wood, and one of the reasons is that it's a very soft wood and that it's green. It hasn't dried out yet. So when the knife goes in there and it's, it pulls out, the, knife, the wood just goes right back to where it was beforehand. So on this one, I actually have to cut a slit to make a little crack for in between the teeth. Um... You really don't want to carve out the teeth individually unless you're going for a very gapped look. At this size, um, and just in art in general, you don't describe the teeth as much as you might think. Um, when we go to describe things, our brain tries to look for outlines, and if you outline all the teeth, then they'll end up looking... Basically, the language of that in our mind it will look like they're much farther apart, and also that they're not very straight. They just start looking really funky. Uh, you'll see on some other carvings in a little bit um, where it works because it's like an old guy or, you know, they have messed up teeth. But I, I think I read in a book one time that uh, when you, in drawing, when you draw women, women's teeth, that you never draw the lines at all. Now, I think that that's not necessarily true, but it is a lot of the time. And basically, again, it's this kind of the language of art uh, or aesthetics and the symbols in our mind, because this is not really a person. It's also the, the, the teeth, um, they're kind of translucent, and the lines between them are really more of shadows than a definitive line, like on the side of our face or where our eyelashes are. Um, so, Putting those lines in, even though we see them there, um, it, it just suggests too much. The other thing is, um, this one, this guy has some, his, he's got a mustache on top, and then he's got his lips on the bottom, which cover up most of the teeth. And sometimes, depending on the facial expression or what you want to do, you might show some of the gums, you might not. So, it's a you know, kind of smallest, and there's only a little bit showing, you really just have a straight line that you poke in there, just a little bit, and pretty much that's it. But if there's a little more tooth showing, then you're going to show a little more of the shape of the tooth. You can see here I had to switch over to an X-Acto blade, and um, it's good to have one of these around. Uh, they're just so thin. Basically, the other blade was too thick for me to get at these details. Um, the blade itself was thicker than the lines I was trying to make, so it was impossible. I ended up making a little V cut to get these little slivers out, and then at the root of the tooth on some of them, uh, I had to make another little um, incision to get that slit of wood out. Alright, now I'm going there and uh, clean up the bottom uh, of the teeth. It's going to make that little straighter, cleaner line and in, in between the teeth and the mouth there. And you don't really want to um, describe the canine, the sharp teeth, uh, because it'll look strange unless you're looking for a vampire look. That's something else that you just kind of blend in. Um, so you generally want that line to be straight across. And in this one, for example, um, it's not really the, especially the bottom jaw is a bit of a smiley shape. And they, they don't really do that. Uh, here I have a, a toothbrush, which is very ironic. Um, that I'm brushing his teeth, but um, they're good to clean out, especially the teeth, the tooth area, because there's going to be little slivers of wood in there that um, maybe have come out already, or they're just barely attached, and that'll get them out of there and clean it up. And I'm opening his mouth a little bit there. You can see, just kind of sticking a knife in there. Um, when you're doing little crevices like that, you want to make sure that you don't get too deep to um, keep, you know, to keep the cut clean. So if you get if you get to the uh, limit of your tools then you won't be able to make as controlled of a cut as you as you would like. Um, and sometimes you may want to uh, leave a little bit in there to suggest a tongue. Uh, but, but usually you don't need to. You don't need to go that deep either. A bit of a crevice at this size uh, will create a constant shadow and uh, do enough. This is pretty high detail for this size. And uh, doing these little teeth like this are, are really nice uh, finishing touches on the carving. They really don't have to be carved either. Alright, so here I'm drawing a little bit of teeth stuff, so you can have something to look at instead of 
the carving's a little small. Anyway, so um, just trying to go through the, the shape of the teeth here. And you can see this is kind of like a, a woman's smile. How much you would actually really see uh, is very little. And even adding those lines, which are not a whole lot of, of uh, character to them, um, it, it kind of looks a little weird. Um, if we were trying to make a pretty lady illustration, you know, what you wouldn't uh, it wouldn't really pull off well. And okay, so here there's the the skull, you know, without any lips. Uh, you saw when I drew the line before the teeth uh, to describe the turning of the jaw, um, which is kind of you basically have the front teeth and back teeth although it it really is a bit of a u in the end or excuse me it's a constant curvature um there really isn't like a flat spot anywhere um so you, you kind of um you generally treat it as there's some front ones and then there's a 45 degree angle and then there's the back ones and um all right so here let me let me do another woman's mouth that's not as messed up. We'll do a little funky smile here. And really you would leave it right there without anything else. And then you can see when I draw the teeth there, it, it just looks funky. It's not normal. Um, so let's do this again. Let me draw another face here and, or excuse me, mouth. And see, it doesn't look better without the teeth. Uh, even it's very cartoony, you know. Um, but you, you can see that, that our brain works better without that description. And, and even in the one where I drew the teeth, like those aren't really that funky teeth. They're all straight. There's no gaps. Um, but they, they just look like too much. So um, here we go where where it would work. Uh, I said would work. N never mind. Um, where making, again, these aren't that funky of teeth, but they look like it. But, and, but it works because the guy's funky too. So there's not even really on a person these would be pretty nice teeth also in that you can see that I've rounded them you can see that really just having kind of uh, nice shapes that are all together that it basically works um, they, they don't even have to be that close to teeth you don't want to get too caught up in the idea of what the teeth are you want to think more about uh, the gimmicks and the uh, kind of aesthetic symbolism here I'm just drawing a few teeth for fun with the roots. There was a molar up there, and then here's like what a front tooth was looking like. Um, there's the gum line that I put on there and the roots on one of them. All right, and then here, this is basically what you're going to be doing, right? Where I just do the grid, and then if you want to make it a little bit more realistic looking, then you do these little, I did a large one right there. It's basically just a triangle right at the top, wherever the lip is, or the gum line. So you're basically just using the checkerboard pattern and then some triangles at the top. Really break it down. Uh, you'll be surprised how well it works. Again, this is just kind of the shape that... If you were doing a really big face, you would do that. Alright, so anyway. Um, I dragged out a bunch of carvings that have teeth in them. Just so you can kind of get a look at uh, how this works in, under different uh, circumstances. Um, this guy, they worked out pretty good. He's, he's got an overbite, so I didn't do much of the teeth on the bottom. Um, this was a bit of a, a homage to an older carving that I saw in an old folk book. This guy's the one. This is the king. Uh, when he's finished, you can see how his teeth worked out there. Uh, he's got had a curved jaw, which uh, worked out and you know kind of makes it a little more whimsical. Uh, this guy, you can barely see his teeth at all, but um, you see that it's fine. It works. Um, your brain still kind of sees teeth there. This guy has way too much teeth. Again, it's illustrative, so it's okay, but that's what it's going to look like um, if you put too much of that information in and there's too much tooth. Um, so you really want to think about the lips coming up. This is a guy with no teeth, and you can see how his lips curled in over the gums. Um, this feller here he has got some teeth in there. There's not a whole lot of marks for his teeth, um, but you can see that it's still, you really don't need them. It, it, it works without it. And here's the skull, so you can kind of see... Um, the teeth go into some other sockets and um, they make these kind of ridges so the, the teeth kind of really keep going in the shape and you can see they actually go all, almost all the way up to the bottom of the nose and there's not much room. This is a little really silly guy he's got a big old mouth and big buck teeth and um, that's you see I rounded out those teeth so they, they really make them look like uh, chiclet or horse teeth when you do that okay so here I'm going to show you two different kinds of um, carving teeth and um, on this one because my technique that I usually use didn't work on the king um, I 
decided to do this here. So we're going to do two mouths. The bottom's going to be a skeleton kind of mouth without any lips. And then um, we'll do another one on top. So I've, this is basically a corner piece. This is a great way to, to practice. Um, and sometimes do face carvings completely. But um, you just round over a corner on your little block of basswood or whatever it is. Um, and then you can get going. Because otherwise you have to dig into the piece of wood on the side. And it takes forever. So you just carve off a corner round it out. Um, and then I'm kind of making a little bit of the skull's jaw and stuff. So it makes sense here. Um, because I've rounded this out and it was uh, already... You know, had a 45 degree angle or 98 9 degree angle. Um, it kind of already has that curvature of the uh, the molars going back um, and curving around. Uh, but I'll, I will accentuate that a little bit to because really by the end they're almost going um, completely back. They don't they they stay on a, a curve and they're still a little bit out. But anyway, uh, so I'm just kind of digging this very large uh, V tool in there, parting tool, and. This is basically, okay, so you, when I make the line in between the teeth, um, I mean the whole, the jaw line teeth across, um, with the V-tool, that's going to make it to um, basically the teeth going inwards. So if you do that, you have to fix it later, um, either with a knife or a V-tool on the gum line or lip line um, turned so that it'll make the teeth straight up and down. The, the way that they come in. Teeth actually they do go out a little bit um, if you're interested in, in putting a little bit of it in but most likely it'll it'll be too funky so just keep them straight up and down for the okay, most part. You can see right there see I'm flattening that so it's not so rounded or curving in so you just gotta watch out with your when you're making that line in between the teeth. This one I'm gonna end up opening so it doesn't matter. Okay you'll see when I when I do the line on the side here I do the first one, then I turn the V tool, I get the top flat, and then I turn it again and I do the bottom flat. Okay. I gotta redo that there. But it's good enough for now, I guess. Okay, so here we go. Here's the technique. I'm, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stab the knife in, and because the knife is a wedge itself, we're gonna use that to our advantage, and we're just gonna stab it in there, work it in there. And the top of it, the spine of the knife, is gonna make a wider spot. See that? So that makes the um, tapering line that we were looking for to get that shape and um, it's pretty much straight so it won't overdo it uh, because this this is a skull so it's showing a lot of tooth so y you do want to show some of the curvature towards the top and so that works out you can by how much you stick the spine of the knife in or wiggle it as you see me doing in this one will change how wide the top of that is certainly you don't have to put any in if you like the cut right there where you don't put the spine in at all. Um, this is a great trick. It works out really well. You can see whipped out these teeth very quickly and uh, they're, they're very nice and detailed and look okay. You do have to watch um, the top and bottom where the uh, the teeth meet the other side because your the spine or the, the blade, whichever side's going in, um, it can cut into that other stuff. You can clean it out for somewhat afterwards but um, it's you're going pretty deep with these teeth so um, you got to be careful about that. All right, so uh, I wasn't really happy with the uh, the whole line of the teeth, so I'm going to go in there and clean them up a little bit. Um, and as long as you keep the teeth in the same place, uh, because you'll see when you take take back some of that wood, the lines will still be there. So you just keep following those lines when you make the teeth again. So I'm also I'm opening up the mouth a little bit, and um, this is usually how I do it. Um, you know, I kind of look at it and then I open it a little bit and see how I like that and then when you open it you want to make it flat and then you'll do a little bit of the underside of the tooth that really gives a little extra detail and depth and then right there I'm doing a little bit of an undercut um, to the kind of the back side of the tooth I guess because if you open the mouth enough you'll want to do that because teeth don't just keep going back forever they're pretty thin you can leave them pretty thick um, you don't want to make them too thin not just for detail but they'll look funny um, all right so here I'm gonna start on the other teeth this one I'm kind of leaving lips in but they're not really lips so uh, it's a bit of a mess but just pretend that it's either lips or mustache or you know whatever the the figure you're doing <clears throat> but basically just so that they're they're covered a little bit all right oh so just to go back to the skull um, 
if you were doing a skull that really didn't have any teeth or lips, um, because this wasn't really a, a skull, obviously, on the bottom. It was just kind of teeth without anything on top. But um, on the skull that you saw earlier, um, what I'll do, especially on the small ones, you find a gouge that's the right size that'll kind of match. After you make your teeth grid, find a skull that'll match the two, and then you can just basically go in and make stab cuts all along the top and bottom of the teeth, and it'll make a perfect little round spot, and it works really well. Um, that will get that in there pretty quick and fast. Uh, you can also do that for fingernails too. I don't know if that made sense, sorry. Alright, so I'm carving this little mouth out here. This is, I kind of forgot at first. I was like, oh yeah, it's it's going to be some lips. So we made it a smile, uh, a bit of a smile. And we got to take these teeth back a little bit. I kept looking in the camera when I was doing this top one, and the shadows looked like they were covering up some of the teeth details. So I kept taking the, the lips back, so just so, because the teeth were the whole point, so. Um, here I'm like, okay, here's where the top lip would be and where the nose would start. And there we go. Okay, and then there, this is like, you know, where the crease is kind of for the smile. Start of the cheeks there. And there's the cleft for the lip, which I would totally screw up. You should use a, a gouge for that or be more careful with it with your knife. Take the lips back a little more, and I'm going to skip to the teeth. Okay, so after a little more carving, we're at this point here, and I'm going to go ahead and put the teeth in. Same way, but I'm not going to dig the spine in as much. <clears throat> you do kind of have to shake it a little bit. You'll see me shake it a little bit. It's just kind of because I'm not stabbing it as deep, and you can see there I slipped the wood and it tore the wood a little bit, but it'll work out okay. Um... Then go to the bottom there. Now on this one also, on, on, the, on the bottom set, I did a perfect grid. If you want to go a little bit further than that, um, on the bottom teeth, you make them just a little bit more narrow because our bottom teeth are generally more narrow than our top teeth are. So uh, the other thing you can do on the bottom teeth is they kind of, especially in the front, they, um, in right, there's a kind of a middle and then those lines in between the teeth kind of slant out just a little bit. Um, you don't want to keep that going up too long. It basically stops around the canine. Um, but just on those first few, if you just curve it a little bit, not curve it, slant it a little bit out, give it a little bit more of a, a real feel there. Um, so you can see in this basswood, the, the stab cuts worked out great. Um, Unlike the, that green tulip wood, this stuff is dry. It, it's I've never really had that problem until I made that video and I was carving on those, and I really had to get in there and cut out little slivers of wood, you know, which is fine. Um, I'm when you get to larger sizes, you know, you probably you're gonna have to do that anyway. Okay, so at this point, uh, I'm again worried about the shadow, so I just start carving this stuff off. Um, I shouldn't have put it there in the first place. And I just take back the lips even more. I'm going to have to do another whole video on lips. I'll try to get the other features in there too for you guys. Um, so, okay, at this point, another thing you can go, if you want to go another step further, is that um, kind of like in some other places you do, when there's an overlap and there's uh, anatomy behind something, um, you kind of try to make it feel like it's continuing on underneath and the way you do that is you do these kind of undercuts you can see um, you just you'll continue it a little bit but just a tiny bit and it'll look like it keeps going because again when you make a tight a tight enough crevice that's thin enough and just deep enough then um, it'll make a constant shadow in any lighting and um, it'll make it look like it's basically going in there for your brain makes it up for whatever the anatomy is supposed to be, basically. Um, and on these, so um, it basically so that the teeth don't look like they're just melding in with the side of the mouth. You're gonna basically make the molars, the the teeth as they go in. You have a more of a steep angle than the side of the face, uh, because that go they go in towards the back of the skull. The way my hands are going there, um, and the the cheeks are kind of still going flat for a while while they go in and so you just basically do that just a little bit and then again make a dark shadow there with a, a, a little stab cut 
you see that kind of makes it look like it's going in a little more, separates it from that mouth, from the side of the mouth. And this concludes To Carve a King. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to hit me up. Carve safe, guys.